The Indian River Lagoon and Estuary is the most diverse estuarine environment in North America. More than 4,000 species can be found here, and many of them begin their lives in the estuary's seagrass beds. These nurseries provide shelter and a food source for young fish and crustaceans like shrimp, spiny lobster, yellowtail, and sheep's head. Seagrass beds help to keep these vital waters clear by absorbing nutrients and trapping sediments from coastal runoff. They also help to stabilize bottom sediments. Because they are so important to maintaining a healthy ecosystem, the South Florida Water Management District regularly monitors seagrasses in the Indian River Lagoon and St. Lucie Estuary. This work started in 2002 and continues today. Seven types of seagrasses are found here, all of them vulnerable to changes in water conditions. Scientists and contractors are collecting data from seagrass beds at the mouth of Willoughby Creek, north side of Boy Scout Island, and just south of the St. Lucie Inlet. Those sites were chosen because they are the most affected by freshwater releases. Seagrasses need light and a balance of salinity and nutrients to survive. They can be damaged when salinity and clarity in the lagoon and estuary is altered. This can be caused by too much or too little runoff and or rainfall. Because seagrasses support a variety of life, they are considered a key indicator species of water conditions in the lagoon and estuary. Water conditions can be negatively affected when too much phosphorus, a nutrient used in fertilizers, enters the ecosystem. Phosphorus can fuel algal blooms that reduce the amount of light seagrasses receive. When that happens, aquatic insects, crustaceans, and other invertebrates do not have enough to eat or enough oxygen to live. By monitoring seagrass beds, we can learn more about how seagrasses are affected by specific changes in the water. For example, a lot of algae growth within the beds can indicate high nutrients. Scientists visit several pre-established seagrass beds every month. Many locations within each bed are monitored. Several one meter square areas are sampled within a study site so that scientists can determine factors like what types of seagrass and algae are present, how tall seagrasses are growing, and record the water quality and water clarity conditions. The process is exacting, and scientists can spend several hours at each study site. The results of their work will pay off with data and maps that help to identify growth changes in seagrass beds. If seagrass densities are above or below certain ranges, scientists will know what water quality conditions are affecting the ecosystem. The South Florida Water Management District will continue to monitor seagrasses as part of ongoing work to improve water quality in the St. Lucie Estuary and Indian River Lagoon. The information collected today guides decisions made by water managers. It will become a baseline for measuring the success of future environmental restoration efforts in this unique ecosystem. For information on this and other district projects, visit www.sfwmd.com dot gov